In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I replace the glass on a, this Apple Watch. This is the uh, Series 5 44 millimeter Apple Watch. Um, as you can see, it, it got cracked. They dropped it. So I'm going to show you the process from start to finish how to uh, remove the screen and remove the glass from the display, replace the glass because it's the only thing that's broken on this watch. Let's get started. <laughs> It's a little easier to see the cracks when you're uh, in the glass than where to go when you have a good light source. I'm going to use uh, a couple things, this pair of tweezers, got a better pair of tweezers here that's, that's a little sharper, and then also this piece of plastic here. It's rigid enough to help uh, uh, separate the glass from the display. You'll see how I do that, uh, or the, the display from the frame, you'll see how I do that in a second. I'm just going to analyze the uh, the edge here and uh, see what I can pick away as far as what glass shards are already loose, what can I move um, out of the way. Now I've thought long and hard uh, about how I want to do this video um, because there's parts of this video that I could simply cut out, um, but I think that there's a lot that can be learned if you, if you stick through and watch the whole thing. Um, you'll see the uh, where things can go wrong and also uh, the, the struggles that, that can happen throughout. So here I'm going to pick at this piece of glass and I notice that it starts, it wants to move, um, but it uh, has a portion of the, the glass that's on top of the display. So here I have some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to add a drop uh, into that crack um, and what this will do is it'll seep down uh, and touch the display. And as it does that, it's going to help loosen the, uh, the grip that the uh, adhesive has on the glass. And I'll be able to move that. And as I put pressure on that piece of glass and, and widen the gap, if I notice any resistance, I want to add out a little bit more of the isopropyl alcohol. Because if I pull too hard in one direction, I'm, I could damage the, um, the digitizer and I could also damage the display. And uh, this being the newest Apple Watch. These displays are fairly expensive, um, you know, just under three hundred dollars to replace. Um, you know, and so I, uh, doing this repair for customers at like half that or whatever, um, I can't uh, afford to make a mistake. Otherwise, I, I'm not going to uh, be able to profit from this repair, and I, I'm not even going to be able to offer a, a reasonable price for the repair if I'm if I'm messing too many up. So I really take my time on every single watch that comes in to make sure that uh, they're each receiving the same amount of care. Uh, now that I've removed the, that piece of glass, it gives me a little bit of more access to uh, the edge here. Um, but this glass shard that I'm trying to push against is, is facing the wrong direction. It's, it's going to want to cut into the plastic. Um, this is a uh, as I can tell from looking at this is going to be my best um, entry point. Um, and there are other ways to, to kind of uh, get at this, but the uh, what I like to do is I like to uh, basically try until I get it um, and do it in a careful way because I don't want to damage the force touch sensor that goes around the uh, underside of the glass edge on the frame. Uh, if I if I can avoid replacing that every time, that's better because uh, it has the original seal uh, that instead of pulling that up and having to basically make sure that there are two seals um, that are done properly. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit because this is a little time consuming, but you can see how, uh, um, how, uh, how difficult it is to slide it in there. But once, once I start in there, as long as there's no glass shards, it tends to to slide and as I turn the corner I need to make sure I don't have uh, uh, too much of the plastic under the display because there are certain sensitive bits on the inside that if the plastic uh, hits uh, I may not even notice that it's starting to, to cut into them. I accidentally hit the power button there for a second so we'll be able to test it anyway as we go through this process. But uh, I want to turn that corner and as I turn that corner uh, make sure that the plastic isn't in too far because otherwise I'm going to cut into 
those cables I'm also getting snagged up here on another shred of glass and so I have to find my way around that but with enough persistence and, and patience it's possible so let's go ahead and test this real quick just so you guys haven't seen that yet force touch works the touch worked all the way around that's all that I really need to perform uh, throughout the repairs just to make sure that the display looks good, the touch looks good, and that I haven't damaged the force touch sensor uh, as I'm going through this. And once I am able to get past that shard uh, of glass, it looks like I'm going to be able to slide around until I meet up with another and work around that um, and uh, carefully work uh, the plastic in and around down the side. Each little shard of glass creates its own little problem and uh, after having done this so many times, it, uh, I uh, um, kind of know my way around each one of these types of, of cracks that, I, that I've presented with. The little different sawing motions, the angle of the plastic, it all matters as, as you do this, the, the cleanliness of the plastic, if it, if it has cuts or not. And the same thing as we run the corner, making sure that we only have enough plastic to get under there and then the screen is able to come off or you can see or maybe not see but it's a series 5 44 millimeter I'll show you again later but um, we'll test it again once we have it all the way off before we disconnect it to make sure that everything still works with the light makes it kind of hard to see but uh, we won't be able to test the force touch right now just simply because it's not connected anymore and I don't want to risk pushing down on the screen at this point because I could damage it if I don't have it perfectly aligned. Adding a little bit of isopropyl alcohol helps allow these uh, the adhesive to uh, come off and then also a little adding a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol to the stickers here I'm able to pull them back. They are gentle, so, um, they're very sensitive so they do break um, and they're not too cri critical for the functionality of the device so I'm not too worried if I ever uh, accidentally cut that. Once I've disconnected the latches, I'm able to pull uh, those connectors out, and then I'm going to gently pull the, uh, uh, each one of those flex cables away from the copper sticker. Uh, this is just a step that will help me in the future as I go to connect it. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to need to do is clean up the frame, and I'll show you a little bit more of that um, uh, later in the video. Now this uh, particular crack here, uh, the way that it cracked, it doesn't leave me with, with much of, a, of an edge exposed. The glass uh, tends to line up uh, perfectly with the, with the display and almost has a little bit of ridges of glass that come up um, a little too high for comfort. But, uh, and as you can see, there's, there's multiple layers to this, uh, this display. You've got the glass, you've got the adhesive, the digitizer, some more adhesive, then the polarizer display etc. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of components sandwiched into to such a small, um, small display and so uh, it's crucial to get this right. And so under my microscope I'll be able to uh, insert the wire uh, manually before moving it over to my, um, my heat plate which will allow me to cut the display off. So under my microscope I'm going to uh, look and I'm going to take the tip of my tweezers and kind of try to scrape away some of the teeny shards that are impeding me from putting the wire in and maybe some of the adhesive ensuring that I'm getting the, uh, the wire in the correct layer. Now even though I have uh, better than 20-20 vision under a microscope is recommended because uh, it's, it's extremely difficult to, um, to see because it's so small and so, so, so delicate. So this is one of those areas where things can go wrong. Here I've got my really thin wire. Um, you can see it there in the reflection. Kind of hard to see otherwise, but uh, uh, very thin. This is 0 0.04 millimeter. Um, I use it for a lot of my refurbishing of the iPhone screens and uh, some of the other stuff. It's a little too thin for the iPad screens if you're ever trying to uh, replace the glass on, say, the iPad Pro or the Air 2. It, you know, one of the this where the displays adhere to the glass. It's just too. It's not strong enough to um, to withstand all of that adhesive. It'll snap. So 
So as I'm able to carefully work that wire in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, push it up against the, the tape to hold it in place. With the, uh, the tackiness of the tape is just going to hold the wire in so it doesn't move. I'm going to make sure it's a little taut um, as, I, as I stick it down to the tape. double checking that it's all aligned and it's not going to start slicing into the digitizer that looks good okay so we'll go ahead and turn on my heat plate which I should have already done I'll remove a, one of the older um, I think it's a series 4 that I just did um, for another customer and I'll line up the uh, the new sc the screen that we're working on. I'll put the uh, turn on the suction there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully uh, make sure the wire isn't going to get caught in the, in the tape, and I'm going to add some more tape to the uh, to the edge of the tape because this uh, because this is so such a small screen that it tends to to move around and just uh, taping down the uh, uh, the screen to the to the actual machine makes it so that even if it does start to slide around as the wire is pulling on it, uh, that it's uh, not going to pop off that easily. Now in most of the, uh, the watches that I do, I don't have to uh, go under the microscope every single time to get on the edge. This one in particular though is one of those. And so once I'm up uh, closer to the temperature that I like, I can go ahead and start uh, um, sliding the wire and cutting uh, the, uh, uh, the glass away from the display. So I'll carefully peel the wire away from the adhesive without uh, um, making it come out from where I've placed it. And I'll start to slide back and forth. Uh, yeah. Speed this up a little bit because well, one, one, it's really hard to see where my hands are sometimes because they're out of shot. But the other thing is, is it takes quite a bit of time to do this in general with the way that this screen is, has cracked. And one of the issues that I'm running into here is I, uh, the, there's a the digitizer flex cable. Uh, there's a port part of the cable that you can kind of see down in there. It's that goldish looking piece. It's uh, It'll get caught by the wire. Um, because I can't get the wire around it, so I'm going to carefully get in there, um, maybe with my tweezers or even just that same piece of plastic that we were using earlier. I can get under the flex cable and manipulate it out of the way, and then uh, I can actually leave that piece of plastic there and work the wire around it until the wire has passed under the flex cable so that I don't damage it. Because if I do damage that flex cable, then I have to replace the digitizer on this display and replacing the digitizer it just means that I have to do more work and it costs me more, which means I don't make as much money and it's just not as not fun. So if I can take my time here, even if it takes me, you know, half an hour or so just to get the glass off, it's worth it, in my opinion, to, to maintain uh, that originality. So I'm going to move the wire around. Now this is something that kind of comes with time, understanding how, how hard to pull in which direction. Um, you know, if you pull too hard in any given direction, you start to uh, scrape and even cut into the digitizer, uh, rendering it uh, uh, with issues in the future, so you have to replace it. Or you could even start to, to, to put too much pressure on the display and you'll end up with dead pixels and other things. And so all in all, it's just one of those things where if you haven't done uh, refurbishing in the past uh, or, you know, any type of glass repair, I would not recommend it. Now that I've gotten all the way around it, I'm just going to make sure that... Uh, You've cut it and there it is, all good to go. You can still see some of the adhesive that, that stayed on there. Sometimes it's a lot more than that. I was more lucky in this one getting most of the adhesive. And I'll gently, gently rub off uh, the adhesive. Uh, if you've ever watched uh, my friend uh, Zach at Jerry Rig Everything's video do a, where I showed him how to do a Series 4, he, he describes this as wiping the dust off a Dorito. And it's basically like that without cracking the Dorito can you and you wipe off the, the flavor. So we'll take uh, some acetone and a clean room wipe and we're going to clean up the display and make sure that we did not damage or, at all the, uh, the digitizer. And you 
you can also see that we didn't you know scrape it or anything there's the old piece of glass and here's our new glass lens that we're going to put on there all right right here i've got a little wax uh, uh tower that i put this on and then we're going to clean up the display um, with that now they need to add some loca loca stands for liquid optical optical clear adhesive. It's basically adhesive that um, stays in liquid form until the ultraviolet light hits it. Um, I got a bubble in there, so I'm going to carefully pick at that and remove it. And I need a little bit more uh, loca, so we're going to add that after cleaning the lens, making sure that it is dust free and fingerprint free because we don't want a, a speck of dust to be caught in between the glass and the display uh, because that would be pretty annoying to look at if you knew where it was. And carefully setting it down, um, I'll be able to get the adhesive to stick to the glass without uh, without bubbles. Now in this case, um, I, I think I just waited too long and the locus spread out too wide and I did end up getting a teeny tiny bubble. And I'll show you how, uh, how I get that out later. I don't like it when I get bubbles in general because it means that I have to uh, put a little bit of pressure on the display, which means that the loca squeezes it out more than I, I'd like it to, um, which just, it, you know, it doesn't hurt it in any way. It just means I have to do more cleanup work. You can kind of see it running off. If you look really carefully, it runs off the edge there. Once the loca is spread all over the display, which can take some time, I think I waited a total maybe 10 minutes for that or so for it to move around, I can go ahead and bring it back under my microscope. And with the UV light, kind of at a distance shining on it, I'm going to carefully move around uh, looking at each corner of the display, making sure it's completely centered with the glass. And once uh, it started to firm up and I'm satisfied, I can hit it a little harder with the UV light and then I can stick it in uh, my, uh, my little oven that basically is, a, is a, what you may see at a nail salon for somebody's hands. And I'll carefully work, uh, work around the, uh, the, the force touch sensor here, uh, gently uh, scraping at the uh, the adhesive without actually scraping the force touch sensor or, or damaging it anyway. Um, sometimes uh, you can peel up a, or pick out a, a whole a whole section at once, and other times you have to just uh, suffer through uh, um, trying to move the stuff, and it's pretty pretty hard to, to to pull off. But sometimes you get lucky, and you can pull off a whole side at once. And I just have to go around the whole thing and do that, but I won't. Uh, bore you with all of that. Um, next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of iso and in this case acetone. I'm going to go around the edge, clean up the edge and any uh, any uh, spill out that the, the loca had from me putting pressure on it after it's cured. And once I have a good clean edge that I know that I can adhere to, I'll go ahead and uh, um, connect it. So uh, on, the, um, on each one of these flex cables there's a little uh, bar that basically goes across it in the shape of like a T uh, on the black part and I'm able to use that to gently push in each one of the connectors kind of going back and forth between sides um, just to make sure it's all the way in and then once that's done I can gently push down on the connectors there and uh, get them to uh, uh, to snap down and we'll go ahead and plug it in and test it So far, so good. Looks like we've got an overking display. Of course, it looks dimmer right now just because of the lighting from the light above. Um, we'll simply run it through uh, the tests that I perform where I basically look at the display, test the touch, and test the force touch by gently putting it in place. Uh, if everything looks good, we'll go ahead and adhere it. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. I'm having to take care of a customer right now, and I totally didn't realize that. Now, if there's a video out there that you uh, you do want to uh, see me do, something I haven't done before, an idea, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments below. 
I'm always looking for uh, new ideas, uh, new videos to do. And when I come up with one, I, I, uh, I put it. I, I do my best to put it out there. But um, sometimes I, uh, I get caught up in just you know everything that I'm that I'm doing. All right. So easiest way for me to test the touch is to basically hold the power button down. It allows me to grab the uh, the slide bar and uh, uh, move it around the screen. And as long as the uh, as long as it follows my finger from corner to corner, and it doesn't ever uh, either turn off or uh, um, or let go during the process, we're good, then we're good. So now I'm confident that everything's going to work on this. So we'll go straight into uh, uh, adhering it. How good that looks. Love the way that they come out. Good as new. And I probably shouldn't put it back on the charger because I didn't want it to turn back on, but I'll no. turn it off. So there you can get a better glimpse. Series 5, 44 millimeter. Now the adhesive that I'm going to use for this is the EA-1000. Um, if you, uh, uh, in some of my previous videos, I've gone into depth as why as to why I prefer that adhesive over um, over any other adhesives. Uh, it basically, in the gist, it has the the flexibility and the water resistance that I that I feel is necessary, and it also has the uh, um, the hold that the bond it has a has a, a good enough bond between the glass and the uh, the force touch to uh, to stay on. I wouldn't rec I wouldn't uh, recommend going swimming with a with a watch that's been damaged in general, because there are several places that water can enter other than under the screen, and uh, just in general I wouldn't go swimming with these watches because I've had so many people contact me with brand new watches saying, hey, do you fix water damage stuff? Uh, you know, I've, I've only had it for a month. It's not broken, but, you know, I got it wet. So I'm going to carefully go around and add an even bead, make sure that uh, I've got a, a solid bead all the way around the force touch there. We'll line up the little antenna there on the back of that display there, and then we'll push it down. Once it's all, uh, um, once it's down, we're just going to go over to each corner and make sure it's got a good solid, uh, that it's all the way down. And then I'm going to take a little bit of um, uh, acetone with a, a cleaner and wipe, and we're going to go up, uh, ahead and clean up any of the, the seepage there, the spill out. Because uh, at this point, it's uh, it's in its easiest state to clean. It hasn't yet hardened up, giving it a nice finish, cleaning all the edges. You can see how much pressure I'm putting on my thumb right now, how wide it is. I'm holding this thing down pretty tight. And then we're going to, uh, you know, transfer that pressure over to a clamp. And if you've ever put your finger in one of these clamps, um, you know, these clamps you can get at Walmart or Home Depot. That, uh, As far as uh, clamping pressure, it's sufficient. Plenty of pressure. It hurts to put your finger in there. Go ahead and put a cap back on our adhesive for, for the next repair. You might notice my desk behind there. I've, I've uh, in the past I did a a little uh, a table with the some of the screens that I've made, you know, with the epoxy covering it up. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what I've done. If you've seen some of my past videos, you might have seen a bunch of different. Uh, uh, little glass pieces that are hanging. I finally done something with them. Uh, here in the front of my store, uh, I've embedded uh, some of the, the screens we've done, but here's something cool. I've uh, gone through and I've uh, basically recorded every single repair that I've done to date. I think I'm still, I haven't put up like the last 50 or so, but uh, I've marked out each city um, that, uh, that a watch has come from uh, uh, for repair. And I'm starting to add other countries in the world because 
I've had plenty of people from out of out of country send them. I just haven't had the time to put those up there. Um, but what I've done, and if you want to see a video of how I do this, leave a comment, um, you know, in the description below or in the uh, the comment section. Uh, but I, I, I uh, of how I make these little uh, basically art pieces on the wall. But I've embedded the 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 uh, old uh, the broken screens, the the glass pieces, uh, and uh, had a fun time doing that to kind of add some life to the front of my store here. Here it is, all finished up. I'll give you guys some close-up ups of that, but uh, it's good to go back to the customer and I'll be able to add a, uh, a new pin to the, to the mat back there. Now if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, comment in the section below, subscribe if you haven't already. I like to put out content that, that'll help people uh, successful if they, if they ever try these repairs. Thank you so much for watching.